Brothers and sisters of Skyrim, welcome back to another Let's Print here on Maker's Muse. Today we will be printing some badass Daedric weaponry. So Skyrim was released in 2011 by Bethesda Game Studios. It's a successor to Oblivion and uses the same engine as Oblivion and Fallout 3 and New Vegas. So this technique should work on those other games as well. Although I'll probably do a New Vegas video in the future because I really want to print one of those laser rifles. So to rip the files you need for 3D printing, you'll need a couple of things. Firstly, you'll need the BSA Opt or Bethesda Archive Management Tool from Nexus Mods. Then you'll need NIF Tools. Mesh Mixer, which is an awesome bit of mesh editing software and you should have it anyway. And you'll need to finally use the NetFab Cloud Service to fix the files for printing. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so first thing I need to do is make a folder. I've just got one called Skyrim. I've copied BSA opt into it, and I've copied NIFScope into it, and I've extracted BSA. So let's run that. I've got a 64-bit system, so I'll use that one. You need to navigate to your Skyrim data folder, so it's in this under Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and Data. We are interested in the meshes, although if you wanted to get the sounds or the voices or anything, you can also get those through here. So we're now going to unpack the meshes archive and there it is heaps and heaps of data and this is why all the meshes in Skyrim are such low details just there's so much in there that they have to have to ramp it down unfortunately but that's all good so we've got that and we're just going to unpack everything so just go to unpack and we're just going to bring all of it out of the archive so we can play around with it without worrying about damaging Skyrim or anything like that and that's done. So we've unpacked everything we need in the meshes folder. We can now close BSL to we're done with it. And here we go. So these are all the meshes from Skyrim. I don't have any DLCs yet, but um, if you do, you'll probably be able to get those easily as well. So what we have here are NIF files. So don't quote me on this because I'm not a game designer, but from what I understand, NIF files are meshes with rigging and animation data, um, which means they're not very friendly for 3D printing software. So that's why we need NIFScope. So I've got NIFScope already installed. So I'll just go and get that. NIFScope. And I'll go and load the NIF that I'm interested in converting. So go back to our folder. Meshes. Just quickly show you some of the meshes. So this is Alduin. Uh, it's just amazing that you can get this. It's sort of like a T-pose for dragons, I suppose. Um, and NIFScope do have a plugin for Blender. So you can import this NIF into Blender and pose it and then export it and print it, which I'll do a video on later, but it's quite detailed. So for now, I'll just load a weapon. So let's go back to weapons and one had melee, no that's not what we want, we want Daedric. Daedric. Uh, first person has a slightly higher detail than the other weapons so you want to use those if you can. And we want Daedric Dagger and that's what it is. So this is probably my favorite weapon in the game. I've got smithing at like a hundred and everything's pretty much one hit kill if you get them from behind. but. <laughs> Uh, I already wanted one for myself, so this is the Daedric Dagger. And you go to File, Export, and we want an OBJ. Yep, that's fine. Daedric Dagger, OBJ, and stick it into our folder. And then we're done with NIFScope. So, like, we're only using these programs for very basic things like one step at a time, but they're actually all very powerful bits of software and you know worth learning in their own right. But for now, all you want to do is convert it to an OBJ. So that's our Daedric Dagger. And what we'll need to do now is fix it because I can guarantee to you that it will have heaps of problems. So anything you get from a game, you should run through the cloud service for NetFab. So we'll go onto the cloud, upload, get your file Daedric Dagger OBJ 
upload it. It's a very small file. It won't take long at all. It repairs it and then gives it to you to download again. So I think I might have mentioned in previous videos that NetFab Cloud Service is the only way I know to combine shells uh, quickly and efficiently. Their downloadable NetFab Basic bit of software won't let you combine shells. It will fix files, but it won't combine them for printing. So that can cause issues with some printers. Anyway, so we've got our Daedric, Daedric Dagger fixed. And it goes into your download folder. Let's copy that back to the desktop folder. Stick it in there. So if you haven't seen my Mesh Mixer video yet, definitely check it out. It's a hugely powerful bit of software. And we're going to use Mesh Mixer because I want to print a dagger that's a little bit bigger than my printing bed. I mean, my Up Mini can print 120 millimeters long. That's a very tiny, that's a toothpick. It's tiny as. So what we want to do is scale this in such a way that it's much bigger. Like I want an actual size and then slice it so I can print it in sections. Um, no, there's a new version out. Awesome. That must, must have been next last few days. So what I'm going to do first is make sure there's no separate shells. And you see NetFab Cloud Service has done an awesome job at combining it. So to cut it, you need to use plain cut. Easy to use, self-descriptive. That's 90 degrees. Cut it here. And you want to slice so it you don't lose the bottom section and accept so now if I go to separate shells you can see that these there's you know two and continue till you get you know four or whatever pieces depending on how big your build bed is and when you're happy with that just export them separately file export you know whatever and send them to your printer Right, so I ended up printing in four pieces, and I always find it's best to sort of sand down the ends before gluing. It gives it a nice rough surface for the acetone to sort of wick in and start softening it so it makes a seamless bond. Um, I'm just using pretty rough sandpaper here. Please excuse the camera, um, the lighting settings were just freaking completely out, and it's going to like flash into different colors. I have no idea why I was doing that. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Um, so I just dip the two ends that I'm gluing together into the acetone and sort of squish them together and hold them in place for, you know, a couple of seconds, maybe 30 seconds or so. And it bonds really quickly, especially with the up brand ABS, it works really well. So with the four pieces, I joined two to two and then let that set for a bit. And then I joined the final two large pieces together to make the final blade. Um, so yeah, the acetone works really well with this plastic. It obviously only works with ABS. If you're pretty in PLA, you'll have to use something like super glue or epoxy. I then took the uh, shine of the acetone off with some sandpaper and yeah, pretty much finished. And that's all there is to it. So now you've got your weapon exported from Skyrim and 3D printed on your 3D printer. So as you might notice, the meshes in Skyrim are pretty low detail. Unfortunately, there's so much data that it has to be that way and they hide it with textures. But it works for the, for the Daedric weapons and probably for a lot of the other weapons too. Anyway, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Like it if you like it. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And yeah, let me know in the comments how you went and any questions you might have. See you around next time on Makers Muse. Bye guys.